My name is Brody. This is my BMW E36 war machine. Start out as a 325, now it's basically an M3, less the VIN number. Let's drive it. I've had the car for three or four years now. Uh, I bought it off a kid in North Van who was forced to sell it from his old man. Uh, too many speeding tickets with his N and he was the second owner. It was high mileage but perfect condition and just a great template to start with. Alex, who used to work for us, um, he's the looks guy with the car and he knows how to make anything look good for cheap. So we started off with the square rear wheels um, from a Z3M coupe. Just by total fluke, there was a guy selling a pair of rear wheels, that's all he had, because what a lot of guys do is they'll run fronts all around because then you don't have to flare your fenders. So I found a guy selling the rears, bought those. The next day a guy posted uh, a full set and I offered him a couple hundred bucks to buy the two rears and he's like, oh yeah, that'll be That'll be sweet, it'll make it easier for me to sell the fronts because the E36 guys run them and two days and I found a set of full rears. The car started off as an automatic transmission car. I uh, did the full five-speed swap. It's got a limited slip diff in it now. Fully adjustable rear control arms. Mishimoto radiator. The M bumper, the GT replica lip. Raceland, Altimo coilovers, and they're a cheap coilover, but I put them on because I wanted to see how good they were for just a street car. I never tracked this, so you know they've been uh, better than expected. I swapped in a US spec S50 B30, built it up so it's 11 and a half to one compression, uh, big cams, headers, straight exhaust, three and a half inch intake, and then for tuning it's got my company's Miller War Chip which allows us to tune the stock ECU. We developed the Miller War Chip because there was a need in our market uh, to allow the end user control of their stock ECU. And there's ways to go about it, but most people don't want to put the time and money in to learn what equipment to use and how to do it. It's just like a performance chip for any other car, with the difference of uh, a USB connection, a Windows editing software, and then maps laid out for you so you don't have to find them and instructions on kind of how to use them. So it just lets the end user tune their car, and if they're not uh, stock and want to use something other than off-the-shelf software, that's what the war chip's for. Uh, it should be 300 at the wheels. That's what the big black dyno or drag strip says. Um, when I had the cams advanced, I had some special cam timing that I was trying out. It was doing about 107, 108 in the quarter mile. I put it back to stock cam timing and that's when I hit the dyno. And it was 275 at the wheels, but I was eight miles an hour slower in the quarter. So I know I lost 20 to 30 horsepower there, so. The BMWs I've had before have all been turbocharged. This was the first naturally aspirated car that I've, that we've built, I guess you could say. Um, we're really big into the M30 turbo cars. Uh, and the last one I had, I sold before my daughter was born, thinking, well, I don't need to die doing stupid things with this car. And I got bored and I built this. It's built to handle some nitrous because that's another thing we've never really played with. So 
I could throw nitrous on it, but I'm, I'm happy with the power level it's at right now. So. I designed the graphic because we specialize in the electronic side of BMW performance. Uh, so, you know, the circuitry, our name, logo. Um, the black and yellow color scheme was my idea too. Everyone was telling me it's going to be too bold. It's going to look too much like a bumblebee, but it turned out really well. And I've got the Vader, Vader interior, which is the BMW uh, sports seats for this car. I actually never liked E36. I was against E36 for so long, and E36 is the chassis code for this style car. I equate it to being the Honda of a BMW because there's so many cheap parts. Uh, there's a lot of access to these cars. They're affordable. Um, there's a lot of people catering to them as far as aftermarket tuning support goes. So it's just, I kind of fell in love with it. You can throw it around. It's kind of iconic like an E30 in its own sense, but uh, a little bit more modern and equally as fun to drive. So the first year this car was together, I lost the oil pump. Uh, it's a common problem on these cars, especially if you're revving much above seven. The oil nut backs off and I was staging at Mission Raceway. Sun was in my eyes. Oil nut fell off, lost oil pressure, but didn't notice because again, the sun was in my eyes and my gauge is down lower, so I couldn't see it flashing. And I did the whole quarter mile pass without oil pressure and that was the end of that engine. So I was able to save the pistons, luckily. Cams were fine, head was fine. I just needed a new crank, new rods, and new oil pump. They have a problem with tearing out the rear subframes. Uh, the later E36 has remed remedied that from the factory. But I mean, as long as there's no rust and uh, the subframe is okay, reinforce it right away and go have fun. They're, they're cheap and easy to own. I actually came from a Mercedes family. I'm the, out, uh, the outcast in terms of going to a BMW. But after owning a BMW, a BMW is a driver's car and a Mercedes is like a cruising car. Yeah, Mercedes makes some sporty stuff, but as far as like aftermarket tuning support and upgrades, it's kind of a limited market. A, because it's older people buying those cars and you know, they're happy with them as they are. But B, they just don't have the same mentality as, as BMW. And it's real easy to make these cars scream for you know, a reasonable price. I think BMW is really stepping away from what they w once were. Uh, just for an example, the new M4, Dan Miller, my business partner down in LA right now, just had one on the dyno uh, two days ago. And it makes great torque, but you know, an M car is supposed to rev. And these things are done by the, you know, by 6, 6,500 RPM. And it's just, they're not the same anymore with the, the turbos and stuff they're using. It's, they're great street cars, but they've gone away from what an M car really is, in my opinion. It's, uh, it's one of those cars that I wish I never started because I can't stop now. The wife likes it, the daughter loves it, and uh, because I'm in the business, it's easy to get parts for cheap, and it's like, let's do this, okay, let's do that, and it just kept going and going and still hasn't stopped.